Okay, so I think I just left a browser with this, with this uh, page up, and you might do the same now. Uh, so I've added this DIA course dash blib dot sky dot zip file. So if you if you don't feel like you have a skyline, so I, I have here's my skyline. I actually I guess I didn't do the afternoon they don't, tutorial. They don't see anything. Oh, they don't see anything. Oh, yeah, good point. Okay, PC three. There we go. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so so yeah. Okay, so here's my uh, here here's a web browser with the web page in it. Does anybody need the URL again? No. Okay. So uh, if you wanna if you want a copy of the file that I'm gonna that we're I'm gonna be working on today, uh, then you could just download this .sky .zip file, uh, and I'll go ahead and do that. So. So here's how I would do to, to sort of instantly catch up with where, with where I am, is I would go and select this diacourse.blib.sky, download it, uh, save that, open it in the folder. So now it's in, it, and so now it's in my downloads folder. I would uh, go to DIA course data. And I would drag this across and drop it into data. And now it's going to say, oh, do you want to? <laughs> you already have one of those. And that's the one I created. Uh, so yeah, I do, want, I do want this file to be in your data directory. So even if you saved one yesterday, if you didn't save it to the data directory, maybe you want to grab this one. Um, you need administrator permissions to move to this folder. What? <laughs> Huh. I hope none of you got that. <laughs> I sure hope I don't need administrator permissions to modify this folder. Um, okay, so... But anyway, so you could drop it there. And then if you had it, you could uh, just do extract all. And then in, instead of extracting it to a subfolder, you would delete over this. And, and then you would extract. And now it's going to tell me, hey, you've already got these files. I'll just cancel. But uh, so what you want to end up with is a, D you'll see here I have dacourse.blib, redundant.blib, .slc. So these are all my spectral library. These three things are sort of parts of my spectral library. And then the .blib.sky file, that's my skyline file. .sky.view is the layout, so that just controls, it saves that I have, you know, the targets view here and the library view there, and if I had a more complicated layout, that would be in the .view file. So those are the files. Um, you know, if you have your file from yesterday, you can just save it to this location and you'll be all set. Um, Okay, so actually, I wanted to take a take a before we get started right back on this file. I want to take a step back and and ask uh, how many people like I, I feel like Tina and I were talking last night. We felt like oh, we didn't you know the the coverage on IRT has been sort of light. And when I asked everybody like when did you where did you generate your IRTs you know in the first day, nobody could tell me. So uh, do do people feel? How, who feels like, wow, this IRT thing is just going over my head? Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Well, two people, okay. <laughs> Are you just the only brave people? Or um, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give a quick, I just want to give a real quick overview of, of IRT. Uh, so, um, so that so that we're all on the same page about IRTs and what they are and how, you know, how we might calculate them um, just while we get a few more people in here set up. Um, so uh, the, for those people just arriving, everybody else has gotten their VM up, and we went over uh, how to get this DI course blib.sky file and get set up so that you have, this you have a file open that says di course blib.sky. 
Uh, and, that, and that file contains, if we go to view spectral libraries, that file contains the spectral library that we just built yesterday. So that's ready to go for more work today. Um, and then now we're going to, I'm going to go to uh, 2015 webinars. And here was the IRT webinar. So if you want to get lots more information about IRT, there's a whole webinar and there's a whole tutorial. Uh, but so I'm just going to give you a, a, a quick overview. But if you really want the, the gory detail, you want to know how would, I, how would I create my own set of IRTs based on endogenous peptides or something like that, that's all you know, covered in more detail here. Um, so this is, yeah, this is what we saw yesterday. This is just talking about alignment and how important it is to get retention times. And then now we present these IRT standards. And so this is the skyline view of these IRT standards. Uh, and this is the data from the original IRT, uh, um, the original IRT paper uh, that was, lead author was Claudia Escher from Biognosis. Um, and I worked with them on that paper. Uh, and so then this is, you know, a set of peptides. The, these, this is the diagnosis standard, and and you know, very nicely shown that you know, how they they sort of span this retention time range. Although actually, I was also talking to somebody. This is like a ninety minute gradient, and and we were just discussing how actually the diagnosis standards really only span two thirds of the gradient. And and if you're really trying to detect stuff out here, you can start to. And, and if you have any sort of curvature or something, you can start to be less satisfied with this as a full range. Um, so there are now six or seven different standards that you could inject. There's the, the CIRT standard that, uh, that I think Ben mentioned yesterday. It's, an, it's just a CRT set of conserved peptides that are endogenous to most eukaryotes. And so lots of options for IRTs at this point. But the idea is that they elute over, over a range that you want to have 10 to 20 of them. Uh, and then the idea is that if the chromatography changes, you could still predict where these things are going to come out. So, so this is now a 30-minute gradient. This is an experiment that I, I said, well, okay, you should prove you can do this for the, for the paper. Um, and, and, but Typically, we don't do this. <laughs> uh, typically, we keep very similar gradients, and the IRTs are mostly helping us to deal with shifts in the chromatography of a minute or two or something like that. But, but it does work for this. Uh, we, di we, went, we did a 90-minute gradient, and, uh, and I guess this is like a 45-minute gradient, uh, or a 40-minute gradient. Yeah, there we go. goes out to there. Uh, and, and then the idea is that the, they still stay relative to each other. They stay, they stay consistent. So you can do uh, a linear regression of these and get an R of 0.999. When you, this is just reten this is A and B. Uh, this is those exact numbers, just a simple linear regression, uh, and they're quite linear. Uh, and so then, yeah, this is for IRT, in general, any IRT standard that you're interested in using or if you're interested in using endogenous peptides. As we'll see, we're going to work this afternoon with something that has, that where they just chose 20 endogenous peptides. It's the, it's the trick data set that was talked about yesterday. Um, and so you want to have 10 to 20 peptides consistently measurable in your sample, so you want to just... It really messes things up when one of them is not measurable, or uh, you know, and we'll see that in our own data soon. Uh, and then, and then you want as much, you know, to span the entire gradient as much as possible. Uh, and then these are a set that are available. And so the idea is that you can take me a measured time, and then you can arbitrarily assign. So these are our measured times in the in the forty minute gradient. And then you could just arbitrarily assign numbers. So IRTs, the IRT scale is just this completely ar arbitrary scale. And the, uh, the original IRT paper defined a scale called IRTC18. And now we're just trying, we, most of the time we just map into that scale because it makes things easier. No matter what standards we use, we just try to 
make them fit into this scale where this one peptide is zero and this one peptide is 100. And I, don't ask me why they didn't make the first peptide zero, but that's what they did, and now we're all stuck with that. Uh, so then once you have this, once you have these, uh, these two things and you assign them those values, you can get a linear equation and map and... Uh, and, and map these two points. These two points are mapped into that space that defines a linear equation, right? So the, these are two points. They define a line. This is a linear equation. Now I can take the rest of these points and map them into. And so that's what an IRT is. It's, it's, it's defining, you're defining some scale and a set of things on that scale which, get, which allow you to do a linear regression to an equation and then you just map everything in that scale. And that scale, what are the units of that scale? No units. It's unitless. <laughs> it's just like completely arbitrary relative numbers, right? So, uh, and, and, you know, the fact that this is 0 or 100 is just completely by choice. Somebody chose that, and they could have chosen a, a million and, and, and 10 million, right? And that would, this would all still work, uh, so that's how we measure, and then yeah, these are, and then now we can measure more things. So we've now, def and then in, in these things we have our standards, measure a whole bunch of new things, and then that allows us to we to, we measure with those new things we measured our standards, and we can now do a linear regression in that. This is the this is the this is like a hundred and twenty minute gradient. Uh, oh no, that's the score. Uh, this is still the the forty five minute gradient. Uh, and, or the 40-minute gradient. Uh, and then, but I do this linear, I, I calculate this linear equation here, and now all of these points, I now have an equation that I can use to map all these points into score. So I guess that's, that's expressed by this because I, I want the measured time to be the, the independent value. So I do a regression this way, and then I can map to score. And that's my equation, and now they're all on the line. So that's what IRT is. Uh, a lot of the tools, we're, we're automating that calculation more and more. But it's important to remember that we are always starting from some concept of measured time. And you, and you should be conscious of where did those measured time, co times come from. And people were a little fuzzy when I asked yesterday, OK, you, got, you, made a, you made a spectral library, and it's got IRTs in it. Where do they come from? Well, in that case, they came from matched spectra. And, match spe and what they're trying to predict is where is the peak apex, right? And so that's actually a kind of a tough problem to go from MSMS spectra collected by DDA to where's the peak apex, I mean, we, we, we think we have reasonably okay algorithms, but they definitely, you know, as I showed yesterday, they definitely uh, can have problems. And hopefully we'll have enough time for me to show you if you end up with data that has those problems, how to, how to correct them like I did for my, my data, the Bruker data. Um, I'm hoping that we can go back and correct the yeast curve, which we saw goes astray and we can and also we can use skyline to look at why does the yeast curve go go astray okay so that's a quick reminder of on irt or a quick recovery of irt hopefully you make you know even if you felt you understand it hopefully you felt you learned some new information there um so now uh i skipped okay so everybody should have i realized that we have a lot of processing time. There's a lot of downtime here. <laughs> uh, and, and we have nights. And, and I was thinking, like, oh, I'll just show you how to run Skyline command line tomorrow. But then that leaves you kind of tight to actually run an analysis uh, in time for, you know, having it and looking at it. So, so I, I, I would like to do a, a multi-run a multi analysis with you using the command line, and that relies on these scripts. So we have this multi-analysis.bat and skyline-analysis.bat. 
Does everybody have that? So you should have downloaded this yesterday. If you're in your data directory, you should have an LFQ bench directory and a scripts directory. And, and then you should also have this TOF64 Skyline file. So let's quickly open that. Uh, so, so if you're in this DIA course data directory, you now you have your DIA course blib.sky file and your TOF64.sky file. And if you double click that, it'll start opening. Uh, it's a bigger file. This is the file that we ended up with as our, as our template for doing uh, the 64 window extractions in that Navarro paper. So as you can see, it's got 550,000 transitions, um, 6,900 proteins. It's got a mixture of yeast and humans. It's got the IRTs at the top. Uh, it's got decoys at the bottom. Um, if you open up one of these, you can see that there are spectra that match. We could go view, library match, and that brings back this page. And now we can see... People have that? People don't have that. Can you show the URL for the download? Yeah, URL for the download. Uh, okay, so yeah, I asked if anybody needed that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So here's the URL for the download. So if you're here and you're looking at these library matches, what, what is there? Can, who, what do you see interesting about the spectra? Just six peaks. So do you, do you think they're real measured spectra? No. What do you think the source of these spectra are? Yeah, they're, they're, they've gone through the same TPP to uh, to spectrast to a TSV file. So that's what. So the, in this process, I was handed a TSV file where they had pre-selected all of the transitions, and uh, just like just like you were, so or just like you created yesterday. So it's the same thing. Then we import it into Skyline. If we go back to our, uh, so here's the, here's the URL. It's right. Did I? Who did anybody still need that? Okay, <laughs> writing it down. Um, got it. Um, all right, so all right, so then uh, if we go back and remind ourselves about this. What we were working on yesterday is, is getting through this skyline, uh, completely skyline thing after spectrum matching. Uh, and then what we've been through so far in, in, in building library one is we did spectrast, spectrast to tsv.py and then the decoy generator. And so this document comes from having gone through spectrast and then spectrast to tsv and then they import it into skyline. That's not, not, you don't have to do it that way. I've reprocessed this, this, I've reprocessed the data, but this is what was actually done for the trial. So this is a, this is the same, this is the normal uh, Abersol lab workflow that, you, that you've been learning, and we end up with these spectra that only have six, six things. We can, and, and everything in here has six things. So this is a completely, we can also take a quick look at the transition settings, full scan, and you can see it's set up a lot like we set things up yesterday with DIA, 64 window swath, uh, 22, 20 ppm, uh, plus or minus five minutes. Um, and yeah, you'd find, you'd find things that look very familiar here. This is the template document and now we're going to say goodbye to this template document. So we'll uh, just reopen our, our, just go down to file DIA course.blib. We're going to go back to our empty document, shut down Skyline. 
as I told people recently, I, you know, I spent a, a several months not even looking at the Skyline UI because I was doing so much command line processing. And what we're going to try to do, well, we're going to do a first run where we actually generate these LFQ bench statistics. So did people, are people familiar enough with the paper to know what the LFQ bench statistics look like? No. Okay, do I have any? Uh, I don't. Okay, well, we're going to have to wait until we run it. Uh, okay, so let's go, let's go set up LFQ Bench. So run our studio. So LFQ Bench is the thing that produced a lot of the statistics for. So when I showed you those those, I mean, m most of the t statistics that I would show you from this paper come from this thing called LFQ Bench. Uh, so when I showed you that the, the peptide counts and how they, they, they came out, that was the result of this, this statistical processing called LFQ Bench. So what we're doing is we, we have this template document, we run Skyline, import the data, run mProfit, train it, and then we export a report, and then that report gets processed by R. So that's, that's the workflow. I was hoping to arrive here early enough to actually put that on a, on a PowerPoint slide, but my bus didn't, didn't allow that. Uh, okay, so... So here you are in, in, in our studio. O click open and get yourself to your DIA course data LFQ bench folder. And then you can see this install our packages fresh.r, which is a script I got from Pedro Navarro. So it's in DIA course data LFQ bench. install our packages fresh.r. And if you, once you get there, you can go ahead and open it. I'm going to leave it open a little bit until uh, I say, does everybody have it open? Is there anybody who doesn't have it open? Okay, so we'll just, we'll just keep waiting for a little bit longer. D C DIA course data LFQ bench install our packages. And then we'll click open. And that gives us this, and it's really just installing a bunch of stuff. And, and what I'm going to say is uh, go ahead and, and select all the way down to this. Bio. So this is, it installs a bunch of stuff just from CRAN, which is the normal R repository for, for packages. And then it installs some stuff from BioC Light, Bioconductor Light. So that's, that's a Bioconductor stuff. So... This is gonna this is gonna go mad and install a bunch of packages on your system, uh, and so then you're going to. I've already installed these, but I guess I'll go try. It. I'll see what happens if I do it again. <laughs> uh, so you can either do Control R or Control Enter. Actually, you can just click this Run button. So if you hover over this Run button, you can see that Control Enter is a synonym for for this clicking this button. Also, control R because that's what was the original R environment did control R. So I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Yeah, so then you start, you should start seeing these things popping up that, that you know, are downloading. Th oh, for me, it's very quick. <laughs> when, when you're doing this fresh, you should see a lot of these things popping up, like this thing. Say, oh, I'm getting this package, I'm getting that package. Uh, and they should just go by without, hopefully, without error. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yes, you do. And so, and so, I actually showed these yesterday. So I'll, I'll rem I, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't as fresh in your mind. In, I actually, ha I have scripts and LFQ bench. And each of them have an R script. So this is generate report.r, and this is the swath benchmark report.skyr. So this is, this is the report. This has more than you need, but it's the report that, that Pedro generated for LFQ bench. And if we open it in Notepad, then you here you can see all the columns. And this is just like, you know, is decoy neutral mass? Like neutral mass, I'm quite sure, is not important to the report, into, to, the, to the R script. But this is just what Pedro came up with. He, I, he went crazy with the, with the Skyline report 
designer, and this is what he's came up with, and it's got modified sequence, probably is important. Uh, you can see there's got to be a total area. He's got total area fragment, which is going to be the area of each peak, etc. So that's the that's the, the 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 benchmark report, and we'll play with that some more. And oh, you can actually see that I still have this peak area is human. So it turns out that the human are expected to be constant. So I have, I'm doing some. I'm going to do some extra statistics on only the human peptides because they're they're expected to be constant. So I can calculate like CVs on them and say like, oh well, what would you know? I've got six runs. How stably am I able to measure things? Um, so I, I and here you can see I have a filter for human, and then I have a filter for that it's got a Q value, which means it's actually something I'm trying to measure. So these are these are two report templates. And the one lives in LFQ bench, and the other one lives in scripts. And then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, in a second, I'll show you the actual Skyline analysis script and show you how I tell Skyline, hey, this is the report I wanna, I wanna export. Okay, so, so has everybody gotten to this? Do you wanna update all, some, or none? Yeah. So I just say none. I don't, I don't you know, like okay. <laughs> like if they're already there, I probably don't need to update them. This is my hope, and 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 it seems to work. So, uh, so and then separately run this install packages dev, just this these two lines install packages dev tools and library dev tools. So you're gonna again click select them and click run. Hopefully that just goes totally smoothly as well. And then finally, you should be able to, to run find our tools. Oh, could not. Maybe I need the library. Okay. I'll, I'll, I didn't run those, but I probably need to at least library that. I may not need the dev tools. but Okay, so now, after I've done that, I should be able to do find our tools. And just, so you should get true. Error. So, did it, did did you get any errors installing your dev tools? Yeah, li run library dev tools. Just just library dev tools. Yeah. And then now try find our tools. Because we're all on the we're all on the same VM. It's got to work. <laughs> uh, and then and then finally. This is, this is how you download and install LFQ Bench off of GitHub, and then you control R. And this is a, you know, thanks, to, thanks a lot to Pedro for giving, you know, this is a great little script. I've used it on a bunch of different computers, and I usually can get through getting everything installed. Um, so does everybody have that? Okay, so... Now let's go have a look at those. Uh, so we'll just leave our studio. You can minimize it. We're not going to be using it at the moment because uh, we're going to go completely command line. So let's first open this multi-analysis.bat. So right-click on it and edit in Notepad. And so here it is. Uh, basically, it sets echo off and sets local, and then and then it starts... It has some just global parameters that get set up, like where is the data analysis root, and that's you should look very familiar. CDA course, uh, where is Skyline Runner? So this is the XE that runs Skyline, and there are two ways to run Skyline. There's either a Skyline Runner XE that that. So if you're running Skyline command line, you if you if you have a local installation that you want to run, that was installed from the website you would normally use Skyline Runner, but in this case, we've installed to program files Skyline, so we have like a, an installation in a known place, and in that case, we use Skyline CMD XE. Um, and then this is where the R is, and you know, this is our Skyline analysis that bat. So this is all just basic setup. Uh, oh, it, 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 does, it manages our log file, so we're gonna be logging all of this, and, and, and this does a log rollover so that we we don't overwrite our log every time. We, we move it out of the way. 
And then finally, here is our one analysis. So we're, the one analysis we're going to try to do first is pretty much the final analysis that we ended up with. We're going to run it on the, on the MZXML files that we have from this course. And this is with 10 ppm mass accuracy and plus or minus five minutes of retention time, which adds up to 10-minute retention time windows. So I've, I've given this, this name of 6664 window ppm 10 RT10. So that's, that's my analysis name. And then you can see that I pointed to this TOF 64 sky. And so if we actually get through building some things, if we actually get through building our own document, we can maybe come back and run some command line analyses on our own document this way by pointing to our ARP file. And then now you can see down here is a more complete analysis, which, when you run it, uh, will give you... Uh, it will give you your very own analysis of retention time. And uh, so here's my analysis of retention time with varying retention time windows. Is that, and that's resolving power. So here's my retention time analysis. And you can see that when I was down at five minutes, I, I really lost a lot of things. And then it get, goes up and levels off. And then I also did a, an analysis of resolving power. And so we're going to do analysis of PPM mass accuracy and retention time. And that's all captured in that script. Uh, so this is, you know, this is, what is it? Uh, about 10 different runs of Skyline on that document. And each one takes about a half hour, but you can do it overnight. So, but first we're just going to see if everybody can get through one. Uh, and that's, that's in here. But let's look at, so they're all calling this Skyline analysis.bat. So let's have a look at what that is. So if you right-click on Skyline Analysis, that bad, and edit in Notepad, it'll pop up too. So here, the, up at the top, I pull the, the parameters off the command line. These are the five parameters that I am passing in up here where I have DIA data. So these are five parameters you can see. And I just give them names, data dir, model name, filter res. So that's the res resolving power or PPM number. And then we have time, and then the Skyline file. And then they get used down here, basically in a few blocks, where first what we do is we take the template and we save it to a, to a special analysis directory so that each, each analysis is going to get its own folder. Uh, and then we actually do the analysis in the new location. You can see the parameters for that. Uh, and then actually with this analysis... We, ex we do, so we've got reintegrate, create model, and then we export a report. So all in this one line, we do the analysis and we export the report for, and here you can see this swath benchmark report.skyr. And so we export the report. In this case, we export the report as invariant format, which is important for LFQ Bench. And then finally, we, we come back and we open the Skyline document again and export another report. And this report is our peak areas human.skyr. So that's so three, we make three calls to Skyline. We say, hey, Skyline, open up the document, the template document, change its, its, its resolving power retention time, and then save that to this analysis directory. And then... We say, okay, now open that file we just created in a new thing uh, and, and process it. And here you can see I use import process count three, and that actually gives us a lot of, that gives us performance improvement over not saying that, because uh, Skyline will now start to run three processes. So we're going to process six files, so it's going to process three in parallel. And it will run separate processes to do that, and that's going to end up being quite a bit faster than doing everything just in line. So and then and then down here, once we've got the reports, we do two R scripts. We call this generate report.r and peak area and gen and detection.r, which we're going to look at more closely later. Uh, and then finally, we just do some uh, some cleanup and 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 reporting to our 
you know, to our to our log file and stuff. So, a question. Yeah. Sorry. So just to structureize everything. So first we need the skyline. So the input, so to say, to the scripts is the skyline file. Yep. The skyline that template. template. Yeah. Your template. So that's your your query. That's your query parameters. So you're going to do a DIA query of your data. And your DI and your query parameters are your Skyline document. You set up all your all your settings, everything you want, except that we're actually changing some settings here. But for the most part, all your query parameters, like which transitions, what retention times, what's your IRT, gets pre-set up in a Skyline document. So we have an empty Skyline document with no data imported into it, and that's our starting point. And now we're saying, okay, let's do a whole bunch of analyses in that document. So if you want more information about this command line, uh, let's see, can I just, yeah, so I just open up a new window. Uh, anywhere you can install Skyline from, so here's the 64-bit installation, you can see that there's a Sky, there's Skyline Runner XE. So if you use this installation, so we're just using Skyline CMD XE, which sits right next to Skyline. But if you use this installation, it's going to put Skyline in some weird place that you're going to have a hard time finding. So we have this thing, Skyline Runner XE, which you download, and then you can use, you run that. Uh, and then here is the documentation for Skyline Runner. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, so all of, every possible parameter, and it's getting longer and longer all the time. And if you... If you're like, oh, I really want to control this, and it does, and I can't, chances are we could pretty easily add it to this. So it's nine pages of of, of various ways that you can control Skyline from the command line. Uh, it's this is getting used more and more. Um, we certainly are using it a fair amount. Okay, so that's that, um, and that's so. This, I think, is a, this script. I've used this script on a lot of data sets now. It's a great model. It's, you know, I, can, I can add and change what I do in here, but this multi-analysis and then a single analysis, these two scripts work really well, and I've used them a lot. And, and, and sort of do an ana start with a template, do an analysis, run an R script is an incredibly powerful paradigm, uh, and we are going to see that. And I've been doing a lot of analyses this way, and, and it works quite nicely. So, okay, so let's get to... So now you've seen it. It's all set up for you. So you've got to bring up a command prompt. And then my command prompt is still in the library folder, but I'm going to change directory cd to data. And if... If you're not there, you could also just go backslash d i tab, which gets me to, and then d tab, and that would get me to DIA course data. Whoops, but I have to type cd first. So does everybody have a command prompt sitting in there? Is there? No, don't quite have. Is that too small because it's hard to read or something? Yeah, you're looking like, uh oh. Okay, so let's see. Uh, while people get here, I will change my font. Uh, font. How do I get my font bigger? Really? That's all I can do for font? <laughs> Size. Oh, okay. Maybe that does it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So maybe that's more readable. I don't know. Whoa. Uh, okay. So here I am, CD'd to the the DIA course, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type SC tab to get to scripts, and then MU tab to get multi analysis that bat. And how many analyses is this going to run? What was that? How many? Okay. Let's go back to the script. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so it's going to do one because this go to end, there's a whole bunch of other stuff down here, but go to end just jumps us over all of it. So we're just going to do this one analysis, and, and everybody's going to, you're, you're, you're going to be using a lot of your processing power on this VM. So this is going to be interesting tests. Uh, you know, everybody's going to, for the next half hour, everybody's going to be processing the same file uh, at pretty close to maximum capacity on your VM. But then we're going to stop. And, and if that goes well, then we're going to kick off more analyses. And then we're going we're gonna to fill out our own, our own graph. And I'm not going to spoil things for you by showing the graph that I created. But yeah, it does come out pretty, you know, comes out a lot like that, that PowerPoint that I showed you. And it's interesting and nice. So. Uh, okay, so is everybody here? DI course data scripts multi analysis dot bat. Okay, so click enter, press enter. So it tells us, hey, I'm running the trial. This is the trial, right? Sixty. This is exactly what we wanted, and then it just goes silent. <laughs> You're like, what's going on? <laughs> it's not going to report anything for half an hour. So what we want to do is go back to our uh, DIA our data directory, and now you'll see that there's an import log file. I have another question, sorry. Just yeah. a short one. Yeah. So in this script, uh, the multi-analysis bad. Yeah. So the DIA data 6600, it's just the name of our analysis, and it does, has nothing to do with, it's just the name of our analysis, this first line, kind of. The Which one? Sorry. Like, uh, like the call bad script, yeah, and then, yeah, the, the one that is highlighted. The, oh, oh, this here. Yeah, and then there is a DIA data 6600. This is just the name of the analysis, and it has nothing to well, do Well, DIA data is the data dir, so that's the data directory. Okay. So, that's, so that's saying, so remember, the root directory was CDIA course data, and that's saying, okay, where, do, where am I going to find... The DIA data, hey, it's in this DIA underscore data directory. And actually now we, the, 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 the program is running and you should be able, if you go into this DIA data directory, you'll see the six DIA files. You'll also see a subdirectory and you'll see these temp files and, and a new copy of this Skyline document. Skyline is now working on our requests. Uh, that, that, that's what we've told it to do is we're telling it, hey, we're going to start in this DIA data directory. That's the root directory. That's where you're going to find this TOF file. Now I want you to import some data from DIA data, and we're going to end up with an, a full analysis in this subdirectory here. So that's, that's the whole point. And, and so this DIA data tells us where to find. So like a lot of times I was doing comparisons between WIF files and MZXML and different formats that I could have. And so I would have, this might say WIF. So if I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison between, if I, if I gave you all the WIF files and you wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison, you could change that to WIF. Uh, and now you can also, this next one, this is, the, this is the analysis, this is defining what the analysis folder name is going to be. And you can see that once we get into more multiple analyses, we're going to be creating new folders. So we've created one new folder and now this next one down here, this would be 10 ppm with an RT window of 04. And then here, this next parameter we're defining, this is the P number of ppm. You can see down here when I say 40, I'm going ppm 40. And then this is the, the retention time tolerance. So 5 means 10, 10 minute window. And then finally, it's the file. So I can, and I can, I can modify this script and add, like I, I've done, I showed you an analysis of using how many processes I might use. So here I just hard code that I'm going to be using three processes, import process count three, but I could make that a parameter and then I could do a multi-analysis to say like, well, would it be better to use six processes? I'm going to tell you that it wouldn't be better to use six processes, but I did find, I ran the analysis of one, two, three on this VM and found that, yeah, three is a little bit better. Like one process takes about 50 minutes, two processes take 38 minutes, and, and three processes take about 30 minutes. So this is an incredibly flexible, useful set of scripts that if you get used to the format of them, you can edit them and do lots of creative things with them. So let's get back to 
in the, if, if we're back in the data directory, there's this import log. Let's open it up because hopefully if we look at the command line, the command line hasn't given us any new information. So again, right click on import log and edit with notepad plus plus. And so, you know, by this time I've talked enough that you should be able to see that the log file has reported, okay, I opened the template file. Uh, you know, it took, a little, it took a little bit to open, so we saw some percentages. And then, hey, it changed the, the product mass accuracy to 10 ppm. What was it to start? Does anybody remember? 20, yeah, it was 20. It was what you used yesterday. I decided to be consistent. It's not, uh, it doesn't matter because we overwrite it. And then it says... Uh, changing full scan extraction to plus or minus five minutes for predicted from predicted value. So and then uh, and then we load the IRT database for this thing, which is in its own separate IRT DB. And then we save uh, out to a new place. And then now and then this line is starting a new process. This is the import where we have import process count three specified. It opens the file and immediately says, oh, I know where to look to find the data. The data is in DIA data. And there are f six files there, and it lists them. It says, OK, I'm going to start importing six files. And then the fact that you see these three here, that's indicating that, yeah, it's, it's, it's importing three in parallel. If we hadn't specified process count three, or if we'd specified process count two, we would get two in a row. If we hadn't specified anything at all, we would just see each file imported at the same time. And I'm telling you that would take 50 minutes instead of 30 minutes. And so now we're about halfway done. I'm going to show you my favorite mapping in, in Notepad++. I do it every time I open a new Notepad++. Uh, so go to settings. Shortcut mapper. And you can actually see mine is all already read. It says reload from disk. And you probably have a blank reload from disk, but go ahead and select it anyway. So select number six, reload from disk. And then click modify and choose. And then you'll see this list of all the different keys you could map that to. And go ahead and choose F5 which is the, the reload. It's a common reload command. If you're, if you're in a web browser, you press F5, it'll reload the page. Uh, so I, that's what I always map reload disk to. F5, click OK. Everybody there? OK, so then, and then click uh, Close. And now, as you can see, this, this file hasn't changed very much since we, since we opened it. But if you press F5, you can now see the progress, and now we're at to 60%. And I can keep sitting here pressing F5 and, 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 and watching it add new progress, uh, which it tends to do every few seconds. So if I'm, if I'm interested, what's going on? Especially if I'm doing multi-analyses, I might be interested in looking at updates and stuff. So that's a quick way. Often when you switch away from it as well, if you go away to some other, thi other thing and you come back, oh, it didn't happen. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes when you go away and you come back, it will, it will say, hey, there's, you know, this file has changed, which it has. If we press F5, we can see it. So that's where we are. Wow, we didn't get to, we didn't get to edit our, our thing. So you'll get to the end of this, hopefully, yeah? Oh, how to start the script again. So yeah, if you haven't started the script, you just want to get to this DIA course data directory and type scripts multianalysis.bat enter. And then it will start this thing and you should just sit there, you know, it should say running trial and it should sit there for about half an hour and then it will report how long it took to run the trial. Because that's that's useful to know cuz yeah, especially if you're doing if you're doing analyses like I was where you're doing multiple processes, that's how I know that it takes 50 minutes to process single, single process and 30 minutes to process multi-process. So regarding this question, yeah. how did I come to the IRTCH and the IRTDB? Uh, that, that was in the template. So, so that's something that we set up. We got that from 
from importing our assay library. So yeah, like, you know, the, what you did yesterday, you had an assay library and you set it up and then you had a Skyline document. So basically everything you did before you imported, yes, it's in, before you imported uh, data yesterday is what I have already done for this template document. So, so if you remember what you did for Sky, the Skyline tutorial, you did a bunch of steps to set up a Skyline document. You imported a TSV. You, did, you, know, you, you changed some things. And then finally you went, okay, I'm ready. And you imported data. And then you generated a model. And then you looked at that. And, and so all that's ne- so the, all the setup part, the setup of the Skyline document, the setting the parameters, everything you did before doing the, da- the import of the data, I have already done and did for Pedro for this for this paper. And so that's what's contained inside this TOF64 window uh, file. And so you can see that uh, here is the IRTDB. So that so that's it's it's an IRT. I mean you have one if you look at your if you look at the files that you created yesterday, you have you I don't have it because I didn't do this tutorial. But if you look in tutorial two, you should see an IRTDB in there. Yeah. You created one. You just didn't realize it. <laughs> so that was that, that, you know, when you... Oh, yeah, it's, it's just auto-created, probably. But, but when you open up the... If you go to, like, peptide settings and you click uh, edit current, this is your IRTDB, right? This edit IRT calculator is stored. In this case, it's stored in the .blib file, but usually it's going to be stored in the IRTDB file. Okay. So that's that. So you're running an analysis. Even while you're going to sit now and listen to a lecture, you're going to be running an analysis. Uh, and we'll, we'll come. I'm going to maybe, oh, I have some more time with you later today. So everybody who's been here and set up their analysis, if we all successfully get through our first analysis, then we can modify this multi-analysis.bat to overnight run us a whole bunch of analyses, and then tomorrow morning we can look at them. Okay? Good. Okay. Off. Time for the next presentation.